Welcome back for part three of our journey from the wild Essex marshes at Fingeringhoe to the centre of London. We were aboard the 1969 built sandboat Mark Pryor with her two crew, skipper Peter Bark and mate Martin aka Fraggles. We cast off from our berth at around 7am this morning heading into the tide for much of our distance so far. But the ebb is easing and it won't be long before we have the young flood to give us a boost. We've rounded Shoebury Ness, past South End Pier, and we're now passing Corriton and Thameshaven, one-time linchpins in the UK's fuel industry, with tankers in and out every day. But now the oil jetties are mostly vacant, some with gear, but others without. There's a little chemical and product trade, but not much by the look of it. The global oil industry seems to have moved on and left the Thames behind. One part of the river has undergone a major revival with the development of London Gateway, a new container port on the north side of the river which opened its first berth in November 2013. It's since opened a second and has started work on completing its third, but it hasn't revolutionised the UK's container traffic as it was expected to. The port was designed specifically to handle the mega ships of major carriers east-west routes, but so far it has only had ad hoc calls from these, otherwise winning what traffic it has from Tilbury just up the river from here. We're in Gravesend Reach now, just opposite the town of Gravesend, home of the Port of London Authority, and just opposite Tilbury Power Station on the North Bank, unemployed now until a new use is found for it. The port of Tilbury is on the North Shore, with its large cruise terminal ready for the 2015 season. The main commercial port at Tilbury has a large enclosed dock area and major quays on the riverfront. There are two container berths on the river, with more inside the dock for feeder ships, and the whole complex has a total of 34 operational berths, including Roro's. There's also a large bulk carrier quay on the river. Above Tilbury, we've only got the skipper's memories to tell us what was once here. So Goldsmith's Wharf? Yeah, that's we've just passed that on the starboard side, Goldsmith's Wharf. Now a lot of the, uh, 
the elder viewers that are going to watch this film, they'll remember Goldsmiths very well. They used to own sailing barges years gone by, had their own wharf. There was another wharf a little bit further on, up the slipway. Um, I've been there many times, we used to load scrap there. Uh, that was um, Thomas Ward's, Thomas Ward's wharf. We used to load railway lines there for Paris on a quite a regular basis. And they, they also used to break ships up there. And, uh, but it used to be a busy little place, Goldsmiths Wharf, but as you can see now, it's turned into a Another, exactly, another one of these housing complexes, Chris. It's going to be the same story as we proceed further up the Thames, you know, sort of what were hives of activity in days gone by are now just housing complexes and well, we're coming up to Greenhive now. Now Greenhive, that was Everard's base and they used to have the Greenhive boys there and there was always, what, four, five or six at large Everard ships laid there doing repairs, people signing on, signing off. And uh, actually, on a night time, it used to be quite dangerous here off Greenhide because you'd had the, uh, the the sailors, the Everard's men, they'd be leaving the, uh, the pub, was it the Brown Bear? Yeah, the Brown Bear at Greenhide, and they'd be sculling across the river to get back to their ships on the boys. And obviously they'd miss fetch. But in those days, nobody was bothered. If they drifted up river for a few miles, it didn't matter. With the Dartford Bridge in sight, here are two tugs belonging to Dutch operator Co Tug, who came to the Thames at around the same time London Gateway opened. There's some chemical and some oil jetties, and some Roro ramps used by Cobalt Freight ferries clustering near to the bridge. And this area marks the upstream limit for most large ships although you'll find a few larger short sea traders and others at times. Up past Dagenham where there's another ferry on Ford's ramp and in sight of the Barking Creek Sluice. It's quite lonely for Mark Pryor. There's no other commercial shipping on the move, although the river is still lined with commercial and industrial sites. In part four we'll be passing the Thames Barrier and making our way to Deptford Creek which will give you the chance to see just how manoeuvrable this hundred foot long little ship is with its single screw, no thrusters, but the right skipper and crew. <laughs> 